In Proverbs chapter 5, verse number 20, the Bible says, And why wilt thou, my son, be ravished with a strange woman? A strange woman is someone that you don't know, someone who's foreign to you, and embrace the bosom of a stranger. So this is talking about embracing, right, what is that? It's a hug. And hugging the bosom, that's your chest, that's the front part of your body, that's a full-on front hug, right? And he's saying, why will you embrace the bosom of a stranger for the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord? And he pondereth all his goings. In the context here, especially in the book of Proverbs, you're going to see a lot of this. We're going to turn to Proverbs chapter 6. But um, there's warnings about the strange woman, the woman that you're not married to. And, and mostly in Proverbs, you're going to see it's adultery that, that we're being warned about. But you can swap these with fornication equally because the whole point is when you start embracing someone else and getting physically close to someone that can cause an attraction to start right there say you're married you love your spouse be careful okay i recommend not embracing the bosom of anyone who's not like a family member at all just to prevent just to keep away and to make sure you don't even get some temptation or some lust of your flesh fire up and spark up and then you start having wicked thoughts in your mind because you've embraced somebody and you held someone a little bit too close. You pulled them in a little bit too tight and now all of a sudden you feel something in your flesh that's wicked and wrong and that you should have nothing to do with. And it's those little sparks, those little triggers that lead people down the road to adultery that lead people down the road to fornication. And what oftentimes happens when it comes to dating is you start feeling these things and then what, as with all sin, you want to justify your sins. And probably one of the most common ways of justifying fornication for people who are dating is, is this. Well, we're going to get married anyways. Well, we're going we're gonna to stay together, so it's going to be okay, so... It's not that big of a deal if we just do this now. You know what? It is a big deal. If it wasn't a big deal, then God would just say, well, as long as you guys are planning on it sometime in the future, then it's not fornication. No, that's not the way God works. It is fornication when you're not married to lie with, a, with another person. That's it. Proverbs chapter 6, look at verse 23. Again, referring to, you know, embracing the bosom or, you know, this, this hugging and getting really close to someone. Proverbs 6 verse 23, the Bible says, For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Don't forget that. This is why I'm teaching this this morning. Reproofs of instruction are the way of life. We're looking to God's word to receive our instruction. Let's take heed to God's word. Verse number 24, to keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. And again, we're seeing in the context here, this teaching is talking about an adulteress. This is talking about someone who's actually has it in her heart to commit adultery with a man. But we're going to see with the tactic and what this is referring to. There are truths that can be applied in a broader sense. Verse number 25, Lust not after her beauty in thine heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. For by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. By means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. This just underscores how important this is because you can be destroyed is what this is saying. I mean, you just could lose everything by means of a whorish woman, whether you're married or not, okay? Now, if you're married, that can destroy, I mean, that can, that can take everything away from you. If you allow a whorish woman, an adulterous woman, to, to catch your eye, for you to allow yourself to become flattered, and wow, this person really cares about me because she keeps on laying on you know, compliments and speaking. Of pro and you know what? Men, especially men and women, though, this this works both ways. I don't even know why I say men, especially men and women. When you got someone of the opposite gender that starts giving you all these compliments and you're married, stop that communication right off the bat. Don't let it go any further. 
Now, I'm not talking about just, a, oh, wow, you look nice today, right? You have to say, get away from me. I don't want to commit adultery, right? It's not, that's not what we're talking about. Okay, a normal compliment is fine. But when you notice that there's someone that just continually is looking at you and giving you just a lot of compliments, watch out for that. Because that is one of the ways that a whorish person will hunt for the precious life. They understand, you know, and guys especially can be very sneaky with this. Guys know this about women. Men know this, and men know what we're talking about, and sometimes women have a tendency to be naive and just think, oh, they're just being real nice. Don't be naive about this. If you have a man that's not your husband and you're married and just start laying on compliment after compliment, watch out for that. Have nothing to do with that. You know, Love your husband and love your marriage enough to just say, maybe I shouldn't talk to this person anymore. Or maybe I should just make it very clear that I don't want this communication to continue. It's worth it. It's worth your marriage. It's worth not being brought to nothing, to a piece of bread, to, to make that type of a stand for your marriage. 